I'm Melissa Buchanan and welcome to another Curator's Corner. We're standing here overlooking the signal bridge of the USS Laffey, which has been undergoing renovation and maintenance the last few months. This particular space has needed a lot of work for quite some time. Anything that is here in the sun and in the environment of the salt water deteriorates rather quickly unless you have a full crew of people on board protecting it. So there was a number of us that were volunteers that decided we wanted to try to bring the signal shack back to a former glory, something that individuals would see and actually understand. It was a watch station, not just some dark storage room at the top of the stairs. So in the process of preparing the signal shack, there was a lot that needed to be done. We had a lot of painting to do, a lot of chipping and scraping. So we spent quite a bit of time so that it actually has something of a view that people would have seen when the Laffey was still in service. The signal bridge was the center for visual communication and was utilized in sending and receiving information over long distances when radio silence is required. So this is a standard signalman's searchlight um, and it, it's a flashing light. It's used um, to transmit um, light at distances uh, silently, visually, uh, using Morse code. In training, they refer to them as uh, dit-da. So you, you know, an A is a da-dit, and you would equate that into a change in, in, the, in the light. So a quick light flash would be a, a dit, and a little bit longer one would be a da. And then you would communicate letter by letter and speaking to someone on the other end. You know, the different kinds of communication we have are all visual. Uh, that's what a signalman is, it's visual communications. So flashing light with Morse code, semaphore with hand signals, one person to another. Flashing light is directional, one ship at a time. Flag hoists are used to communicate to a wider audience. The host ship would hoist a flag, each ship would then repeat that exact identical flag hoist, and all ships would then execute whatever was told. When you're creating a hoist, the bag is made up of the entire alphabet, and then there's zero through nine. When your counterpart somewhere is reading a hoist and the guy on the flag bag is now clipping. So he's clipping an A, and then from the A, it's automatically clipping to a B, or clipping to a C, or you're spelling whatever it is that you need to spell out, whatever you're being told to clip, you're clipping. And when the last one is done, you're clipping it to the tail, and then and you're hoisting that flag up depending on the circumstance. Most modern day militaries require their personnel to learn and understand semaphore. Which is the use of flags um, to uh, initiate letters and spell the alphabet and communicate externally to someone. Um, it is a point to point signaling just like the light is, uh, but it's used for close up uh, signaling and communicating. Messages were sent via semaphore flags from boat to boat or boat to shore. In one of the manuals is how to dress a ship. So from the masthead down to the stern, and from the masthead down to the bow, you would hold flags, and it would stay there for special holidays. Sometimes it's done in the change of command or in commissioning a new ship, it might be dressed as well. I'm Melissa Buchanan. Thank you for watching another Curator's Corner. Don't forget to visit the Signal Shack of Worth the Laffey the next time you visit Patriot's Point.